what I emphasize most is, hey, I want thumbs together. What you do with your hands afterward is not that important. Thumbs together, platform, okay, ball hitting between elbow and hand, and making sure I'm not following through really high, but just the target. I want a platform with my feet also, so that I'm stable all the time when I'm passing. I'm a real hip, knees to target, not left hip, right hip. If I can get there, terrific. And then what you do with the platform, tilting it, is critical. I want good passers. Huh? So if I have two or three players that are good passers, I'm going to want them to pass all the balls. And hopefully I'll find somebody else who's a setter and somebody else who maybe okay. is a middle blocker and they're not going to do a lot of passing so that the players themselves kind of seize a certain role. Now, when they're young like this, they should, in my mind, do all the skills because we don't know how tall they're going to grow, how, how hard they're going to play, how long they'll stay in the game when it's a tough game. You don't really know that when they're young. But what I want them to always do, to me, the more drills that they can do where it's two people and one ball, or even just you guys passing the ball to yourself. Just pass the ball to yourself while you're there. Go ahead. You guys who have balls, just passing to yourself. You can still call it. It's still part of the game. And again, I would just look and see how are they working with their platform. Obviously, Vision does a great job, not just with the older kids, but the reason they have great success is the younger players also have very good skills. So maybe these guys, when they're just ready, maybe they should do two push-ups. OK, this group here, two push-ups. Let's go. And I like to see how does that work for you. Yeah, OK, that's good. All right. Because they, they should do something, right? So whether they're jogging in, in place, or if they had balls and they were setting to themselves, whatever the case may be, I'd want them. Now, you guys, I want you to move around while you're passing, OK? Just move around. Keep passing the ball, but moving. Moving inside and out of each other. I like the spatial awareness of volleyball, where they have to be able to move around. So if I was to say to you guys, hey, I want you to line up from short to tall. Keep going. Keep the ball in play. I want the shortest person to your right, and then the tallest person to the left in line. So guys, keep moving. Keep the ball in play. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay, let's get where we have to be at two more seconds. Okay, so for me, you know, we could spend an awful lot of time talking about every specific thing. If there's a 25 pages on a book on passing, that's great. A great serve comes, hits the girl right in the forehead, and goes right to the target. Was it a bad pass or a good pass? I thought if it went right to target, I'm sitting on the bench, I'd say, good pass. All right? Because it went right to target, where some people would say, oh, she had to move her feet. She needed a drop step. She needed to dip her. Hey, I'm thinking, I want the good pass. All right? So that would be how I look at it. Not that passing, I think passing and serving, most important skills in the game outside of just communicating uh, all the time. For me, I think any, any skill, primary adjustment's got to be with your feet. So we're talking about hand position, where your hands can't get there unless your feet get there. So every skill that I teach, especially passing, will just be good athletic position, ball comes, can I get to the ball so now I can use the skills that I have. So no offense to Terry, but we're going to talk, I'm a little bit conscious of Terry talking about thumbs together. And I think in just standard, you know, generic volleyball, that's great. So I need one guinea pig. So you, thumbs together. So if your thumbs together, this ball comes to rest a lot on her bones. So it's the... Radius, right, Terry? Radius. So these bones are basically, if your thumbs are together, these bones are what's contacting that ball. So a lot of times if you see Karch Karai pass, some of the best passers, alternate hand position. He actually goes from here to actually holds the side of his hand. Some of the great passers will be in this, in this mode to just open up that platform to get a, a wider, flatter surface. So I don't have the exact hand position that I'm going to tell her to use, but with some of my, my pastors, we'll experiment about just, you know, even if you go thumbs together, but point your thumbs at the ground. That's one way to open this platform up to get a larger surface area. 
Um, and, there, and there's not one way. I've got some pastors that are the old school, like you're getting a drink of water with your hands and your thumbs are together. Some will hold the fist and hold it. I played with the guy Eric Sullivan, who was an amazing pastor, who was a libero on the national team for eight years, and he literally holds two of his fingers and locks it out. And his platform is twice as wide. It's just a way to get that thing open. So it's just one thing to play with, and I'm not saying that it's, it's going to be ideal for everybody. The other thing that people don't talk about very often, they always talk about platform. The other thing is I'm a huge fan of distance between platform and torso. So I think the spacing between arms and body is huge. Hold that. So I think too many times, every, every volleyball magazine picture of a great passer you see, there's going to be a huge distance between arms and body. So if my feet are to the ball, ball's coming in, and my arms are away, now I can go fight off these balls. I'm in control. Once that ball gets tight, now you're handcuffed. Now that ball's playing you. And I know there was some, I don't know if it's still widespread, but a while back they were trying to teach people, you know, tanden passing and arms locked tight, and it was all feet. And, and I think that's a big mistake, because that ball tails and travels, and I think once you got your feet to the rough area where the ball is, like these guys were talking about, I may have to go outside. I may have to go right hip. As long as your arms are away from your body, you're going to be actively in charge of that ball instead of letting it play you. I've worked with adolescents a fair amount, and uh, one of the things that I really like to do, um, kind of building on what Mike said, was I want them to figure out what their bodies are doing. They're teenagers, okay? Hi, Margie. They're um, growing up. Their limbs are going every different direction. I can really relate to that when I was that age. And so one of the things I want to call their attention to is what their bodies are doing, because a lot of times they don't know. They're on spots in the court, and I'll talk about this in the blocking part, but they don't know why they're there, and they don't know what their bodies are doing. They think they're low, but they're standing here. So one of the things I like to do is um, have them focus on one thing. So let's just say uh, I like people to pass in the middle of their body. So when you, what I want you to do is these guys are going to toss, you guys are going to uh, pass, and I want you guys to pass, and you guys have to say yes or no. Is it in the middle? Is it off to the right? Is it off to the left? OK? All right, balls on this side. Spread out a little bit. OK, here we go. So you guys are watching and helping them. Go ahead, toss to them. Not a killer toss. Is it yes or no? OK, do it again. Keep going. There we go. Is it in the middle? OK, go ahead. OK, is it in the middle? Go ahead, one more time. OK, stop. These guys are really good at this, because can you see, especially from you guys in the back, if it is in the middle, you shouldn't be able to see any part of the ball outside of their body. And if they're doing that, which it looked like, from my point, that that's what they're doing, that's a good start. Another thing that I would do is I would say I want to exaggerate the idea of getting their platform out early. Mike was mentioning that a lot of guys pass with, uh, you know, to expose more of their arm to have better control, and I think they do, and I think, well, Karch is a stud, and so is Eric, <laughs> um, and those guys are awesome. Uh, I think sometimes, I don't know a lot of women, maybe the UCLA girls do that, I'm not quite sure, but I know when I'm working with adolescents, I feel like that's uh, maybe a little bit too hard for them to do, so I do like the thumbs together, because I'm not sure that... Um, we have enough control and they know what their bodies are doing in order to do something like that. I think that's a really advanced thing for, for people who really are um, talented. And I think you can teach that, but I think when I'm first starting to teach kids and adolescents and work with them, I go back to the thumbs together kind of thing. That's just my opinion. So one of the other things I like to do is have them figure out what their platforms are doing. The ball is moving on the serve or whatever it is, they may have to move to get there. Their platform has to be consistent. So what we're going to do is exaggerate this. Before they pass, I want you guys to have your platform out straight, OK? And then I want you to pass the ball. And if they bend their arms at all, say no. If it's straight the whole time, say yes, OK? All right, let's see what they do. Good. Again? Toss about five. Yes, yes. Good. Next. These guys are doing a great job. Look again. 
Last toss. OK, so one second. Let's see. Let's watch her right here real quick. Sorry about that. All right, go ahead and toss to her. OK, now that's good, but I could be picky with that one because she's getting her platform out right before the ball hits her, right? She's a good passer, so she can get away with that. But the tougher the pass, it's going to be harder. So one of the things I want her to do is make sure that's straight. Did you see that? OK, those little things, I think, make a big difference. So those are some of the things I want to do to bring their attention to what their bodies are doing. All right? One of the things that um, I think almost every person that gets into our program that we have to end up dealing with is uh, what they do with their platform um, or how they form their platform, depending on what, wh how they stand, um, and then what they do with their arms when they move. All right? So a lot of people now teach ready position with their arms hanging down. A lot of people teach it with their arms bent here. And I think all athletes have to figure something out if they're going to pass a ball. And that's if this is the angle that you want your arms to be at to get the ball to go where you want it to go, then how did you get to there? Right? One of the things that we worry about the most is um, the, the, the uh, more their platform gets crazy, the more they do things with their platform hitting the ball, in the end, the worse they end up being that they have to learn how to be calm and they have to be able to control the movement. So if you're going to start in your ready position here, then you have to get to the rebound angle before the ball gets to you. You can't do it and time it going this way unless you're trying to hit a slow ball like this. So you guys, you two right here, just pass back and forth. The ball's not traveling very fast, so they have to do something with their platform. All right? They have to learn how to swing their platform and contact the ball and get it to go where they want to go. OK, so we can all see that. Nice job. Um, now, when the ball goes faster, if she hits it at you, are you st still going to do the same thing with your platform? Probably not, huh? Because it's coming, and you don't have to hit it very hard. So I think that all the things that we point at, we have to point at when we get served at, when we're going to get hit at, how we control our platform. And I think that's one of the weakest things that we do. There aren't a lot of great, great passers out there because they do a lot of this at the ball. They do a lot of this at the ball. So if you stand with your arms bent, you better get them out to the rebound angle before the ball gets to you, all right? If you're digging or receiving a serve. If you stand with your arms down, then you better realize you've got to get to here. Otherwise, stand with your arms here, all right? Because it, then it's just simple. And then it gets crazier when you move, because what do most people do with their arms when they move? They start here, and they bring them right back in here, and then they have to do this to play the ball. So awareness, like Kim was talking about, of the platform and how we control our arms when we do things, I think will help a lot, too.